I am Anna Seewald and this is Authentic Parenting, a podcast about personal development in the context of parenting, where I explore how you can find more calm, connection and joy in parenting through the process of self-discovery and inner growth with a trauma-informed lens. Today on the podcast, I am circling back with past on-air coaching participants to find out where are they now and how are they doing? Was the coaching session helpful? Did they apply any of the insights, tools, and strategies that we discussed during our call in their life and parenting? What's the update? I started doing the on-air coaching calls back in 2018 and all throughout 2019 pretty regularly. I was able to get in touch with all of the participants except one woman from the UK. Betham, if you're listening, please get in touch and send me some updates. I had a blast reconnecting with them and I hope you'll enjoy hearing from them as well. And if you would like to sign up for an on-air coaching call, please fill out a short application Find it in your show notes or at AuthenticParenting.com forward slash coaching. Again, AuthenticParenting.com forward slash coaching. It's free and no prerequisites are required. On-air coaching calls are one-time unscripted sessions where you, the listener, get to be a fly on the wall in my virtual office as I help someone, usually a member of the authentic parenting community, in real time with a real challenge. Let's hear from Lauren, our community manager, who was the first person to ever do an on-air coaching call. She appeared in episode 146, Tips to Ease Parental Anxiety and Set Boundaries. Lauren, when you came to the podcast to do an on-air coaching call, you were the first one. There was no on-air coaching call before. I just threw the idea out there. I don't even know how I announced it. Maybe you remember, but you were so brave enough to say, you know what, sign me up for this. I'm going to do this. (laughs) I think you announced it on our private community page and a few people had responded and I was just like, hey, I'll do it. Call me anytime. Mm. Okay, so do you remember, since it's been a long time, what questions you had for me? What did you come with? What were your challenges at the time? I do remember a little bit, but I want to see if you remember. Sure. It was a little bit over a year ago. So at the time, daughter had just turned three or was almost going to be three. And we had just had a second baby who was six or seven months old at that time. So life definitely looked a lot different then with two really young kids. And my main struggle at that current time was working on body awareness, them being able to share together and worrying about their relationship progressing and how to incorporate help from other people, from our family members and working on myself on not taking on other people's problems or worries and just looking at the situation yeah, at hand. I, I remember that part. I remember clearly you ha- we discussed some family issues. That's right. Relationships with uh, boundary setting, right? Right. Yeah. And I think like my biggest takeaway from speaking on air with you was you said to me like, in that moment, can you ask yourself, is this mine? Is this mine to worry about? And that was really powerful for me. And I feel like I've taken that with me over the past year and a half and built off of that, but always come back to the core of, is this mine? If I'm upset, if I'm dealing with other family members, if I'm dealing with things outside of my control, asking myself, is this even mine to 
take on, to worry about, to be upset about, or to allow to shift my mood and my inner peace over this. Yeah, I remember that. Is this your problem? If not, then don't even bother being bothered, right? That's right. Right. And that was a hard, that was a really hard one for me, especially with having two little kids. And there's so much that you have to manage with two young children. And there's so much that falls on you as the parent to make sure everybody's napping, to make sure everyone's had their snack and everybody needs you to help them get dressed, to help change them, to help do so many things. I think a lot of times at that time in my life, it was easy in other relationships to think that I needed to control that relationship or I needed to be the one to fix something if something went wrong, where that's not how a regular relationship works, you know? Mm. Did you have any expectations signing up for the call or you were just, let's do this? This sounds interesting. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't really have too many expectations. I had been a longtime listener of yours. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I just knew like <laughs> something's going to come out of this and I'm excited and I was excited just to hear your advice and your take on anything that was going on. So I just knew it would be helpful. Yes. Do you remember your initial aha moments during the call? It was definitely eye opening when someone is asking you a question, like, and then listening to yourself answer it. Like it was interesting for me listening to the episode even after the call to hear like, hmm, sometimes when you say a problem or a worry that you have out loud, it almost like takes away the power of the worry or you can get perspective on it and see like, hmm, this doesn't sound like it's that big of a deal. Like in my mind, when I was just thinking about it, it felt really big. But then once I said something and you get it out and you have a sounding board, someone like you who's there to listen and there to help, not there to project their issues onto you or not like your friend, your mom friend down the street who's going to tell you how she worked out that problem real quick. Like it was really interesting being able to talk to someone who was a professional who was there to hear and help you as an individual. Yeah, that's the power of coaching, mentorship, or or working with a therapist or or a professional like that, a mental health professional, that that you develop that trust. There's this space just for you. And if the person is accepting, non-judgmental, I think the relationship helps the person to grow and change. You know, it's not like, other people have insights and guidance and things like that. But when you develop a relationship with a specific person, I think that's when change happens. And when you hear yourself speak, you gain a perspective, you generate insights together. This is why I love this work too. And so I encourage people to either sign up for the on-air coaching calls, which are one time unscripted. We just do it and it's very helpful and it's free for the person to sign up or to work with me. I would be thrilled. Like I always say. I totally agree. It's so amazing. And just since the episode that you and I did together, listening to other people people's on-air coaching has been really powerful because it's it's struggles that we can all relate to on some level. Even if we didn't go through that exact thing with our child, it's other parents who are here, who are showing up every day, trying their best and getting advice. And it's helpful for everyone to listen in and to hear about it. It's It's been really interesting. Yes, I agree. That's why the on-air coaching calls are very popular uh, on the podcast. I believe two of them or three of them are in the top 10 of 2019 of all downloads. So definitely people love those on-air coaching calls. As, as I always say, you know, be a fly on the wall and peek into someone's life. Because people exactly. Are, people, we allow that people are so brave and open. The, those women and men who come to the podcast to to talk about their challenges. I I, I think really that there was it. a lot of power in hearing everyone else's stories and hearing everyone else's struggles and that you can overcome it and that there is something that's going on with everyone. And we're all just trying our best every day with the tools that we have. 
And the more tools that you can gain, the better that the situation could be. Yes. How about takeaways uh, after the episode? What did you implement in your life? If anything, like you already mentioned that the power of that question, is this problem mine? Is this mine? That that's pretty huge. I think that's a good one. And anything else that you took away and implemented that, that you can remember? Definitely. Well, the girls were working on some sharing, especially since my youngest one at the time was crawling and newly able to get into my toddler's art crafts, newly able to get into her toys. So that was a, a new struggle. And uh, really, a lot of the takeaways helped me to be more comfortable. After I listened to the episode, it really made me realize that I was uncomfortable in my oldest daughter being upset that the baby was wrecking her toys. And it wasn't so much that I needed to fix the problem for her. It's that I needed to be comfortable with her being upset and being uncomfortable. I needed to become comfortable with her big emotions so that we could move through it together versus me trying to fix a problem for her. And I think that was a really big takeaway and picking up that skill helped me a lot. It was difficult in the beginning, but it helped me a lot to ease my mind of, okay, someone's upset right now. Okay. She took your toy or, okay, this happened. And now what can we do? Like letting the past be the past and moving forward into the present moment. And that is obviously an ongoing thing. But it definitely helped me to just ease into the now and what's happening. Yeah, you're an amazing mom. As I said uh, before we started recording, I watch your Instagram stories and the beautiful life that you created with your daughters and how they have grown. You know, we're talking about the, a year and a half ago about this uh, coaching episode, but where are you today? What has changed in terms of parenting, your own growth? I want to do this update because I want to show people that things change. Time flies. We're never stuck in our own old challenges. When we're stuck in the challenge phase, it seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel, right? But when I'm recording these updates, I'm like, wow, it's so interesting. People have grown. People have changed. Their kids have grown enormously things have shifted and and that's a great thing to hear for a new parent or a parent who is currently struggling with something and they see like no end to their challenge <laughs> i totally agree it's it's amazing how quick time can go by and i think i've learned that a lot since having a second child is that even through through a hard transition this is going to pass and mm. it's going to pass before you know it and you're going to get to this great spot with with your kids and that's going to pass before you know it. So if you don't sit here and lean into this present moment and really enjoy it, you're going to miss the whole thing. And since, you know, a little over we're almost a year and a half ago since we taped, we are actually pregnant with our third baby who is due in ooh, like three and a half months. Yeah. So we yeah. are in a lot of change in our time right now. Wow. And it's exciting to think about the future and to think about adding another person to our family. But I think I've been much better this time around with just leaning into the present moment with my two girls right now before this baby comes, instead of thinking about what it's going to look like in four months, just noticing where it is right now. Yeah, I so agree. Sometimes people email me, and they say, oh, we will be moving in April of 2020, 2020, or we'll be having a baby in like a, a year from now, or such and such has to happen to our family in, in a long time, right? And they're like, how can we prepare our child? How can we get prepared? The answer is you you don't prepare ahead of time and you don't worry about things ahead of time because right. it's anxiety provoking, right? Like why worry about something that hasn't happened yet? And there's like a year to that event. How can you prepare yourself or your child for for moving from Germany to America? 
it's simply impossible to, for me to give you advice, right? The best advice is just relax for now. When the time right. comes, you will, believe me, you will find ways of dealing with it. You will be resourceful and you will find help. I think when people rush the time and worry about things that are futuristic, you know, it, a lot of anxiety comes out of it. I totally agree. I know that just after my first child, I had a ton of anxiety and worrying about, you know, taking on a new role. Having your first child is, is definitely different because it's a whole new world for you. Your life is jolted. Everything has changed. And I think as time goes on, whether you have more children or whether your child just gets older, you can learn to adapt and learn to lean into the present moment, mm -hmm. or at least hopefully you can, because it really helps to ease your anxiety. If you can just let go of what has happened yesterday, let go of what has happened 30 minutes ago, and just enjoy the moment that's happening right now. Even if the moment is hard, just enjoying that this isn't going to be hard for forever. Yeah, that perspective the, the, that things are impermanent in our life, the good, the bad, the ugly, right? Um, we have a great episode about impermanence with Anne Cushman. I forgot the title of it, but we talked about this notion of things being impermanent in life. And when we embrace, it's it's so peaceful and easy to live our life. It really is. And I feel like after our conversation, it was a real jumping off point for me to shift my mindset into thinking that way. You just gave me so many little nuggets, little ideas of things that I could keep following that path. And in the past year, I mean, I've gotten really into yoga and I've tried out some meditation and I've tried future self journaling um, by this one girl on Instagram, the holistic psychologist. Mm -hmm. And that has been really amazing too. just all of these tools together. Mm -hmm. There's not just one tool or one fix or one thing that's going to change. And I think that that's so true in your own individual journey as a person, but also in your journey as a parent and teaching your child. There's not one, it's, your child doesn't have a problem and you're trying to fix it. You're just building a relationship and becoming comfortable with emotions, which I think is, you know, the whole idea of authentic parenting and parenting from your heart and getting on an emotional level with your child. And it does take getting yourself on that emotional level first, and then the rest comes easier. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Wise words, Lauren. Um, how about your favorite episodes of 2019? Since I have you on the call, do you, Ooh. you don't have to remember the exact titles. I mean, you summarize and recap the episodes for our community. I'm sure you can, you've listened to a lot of all of them. And so what are your three favorites that you uh, recommend to people or you really enjoyed? Um. I I really like one of the on-air coaching calls. I think it was Bethann. She has three kids. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure they're three boys. That one was super great about her picking her kids up from school, like hard transitions that are really tough that mm -hmm. I I just felt like her whole episode, she was super candid. There were some amazing takeaways on that one. I totally loved it. Um, Oh. They're all so, there's so many good ones from this past year. There were so many good people that came on to the episode. Hmm. What would my other definite top one be? How about mindful communication? I think you spoke about that one before with Orange Jay Sofer. Oh, that one is by far a favorite. That one might actually be my favorite episode that has ever been on. Hmm. It was just incredibly helpful in learning to let go and accept what is currently happening in this moment. I feel like that episode really laminated that takeaway of you can only control yourself and your own thoughts and your own patterns and everyone else is kind of carrying around their own history, their own thoughts, their own beliefs, and you don't need to change anyone and you don't need to change yourself. You can just 
must accept where both people are lying. Mm, yeah, that that's true. So what were your, like, what did the podcast teach you? I'm, I'm just curious. You, you've listened to it for so many years. What are, I mean, and it, it's a hard question. I understand. I don't like this kind of questions myself when people ask me or I ask other people, but it's kind of interesting on the spot. What would you say the podcast has given you like an idea or an aha or an insight or a something? Oh, big. definitely. So mm -hmm. many big ones throughout the years. I mean, I remember when I was listening, when my first daughter was seven or eight months old was when I started listening. And I remember emailing you before and you emailed me back. Like I emailed you some scenario that we were going through. You sent me a really long email back. And I feel like that was the building off point, even just in those moments of starting to listen to the podcast, even before I joined the community page or started corresponding with other people, just knowing that there's this way of parenting out there. And if I want to chase that down and succeed in that area, there are other parents who are there paving the way too. And you don't need to parent like your friends do. And you don't need to parent like the people in your community do. You can be true to yourself and you can find a community that will support you in that. I think that has been the biggest takeaway of the whole entire podcast. Even if you're not on the community page of just listening to every single episode and hearing that there are people who are walking this path of life and you can do it too. Yeah, so true. And I think that was a really big takeaway. And also just listening to every single episode that's, you know, whether it's an episode talking about divorce, I've never been divorced, but I've heard a lot of great takeaways there. I mean, there was a great episode on co-parenting. I've never co-parented before, but I certainly have friends who co-parent. And I think because I do listen to every single episode to recap it, even some that I would think, hmm, this doesn't really apply to me. But I sit there and I listen through every single one and I always take something away. I can think of someone in my life that's going through this and I feel like it's helped me to develop empathy for their situation or just perspective of what other people are going through, even if their story is totally different than mine. Yes, that's that's per perfect, actually. Well, I want to thank you again from the bottom of my heart for everything, all the effort and the time and volunteer efforts you put into this podcast. I mean, it's been truly amazing to know you, uh, to have met you. You came to the conference and, and you're just truly a wonderful human being with big heart and our community couldn't do it without you. So when you have a baby, I don't know what we're going to do. Hope, you know, I want to lighten your load. We, maybe we can find someone <laughs> to, to replace you a little bit or we will see how things go, but happy yeah, holidays. We'll yes. Something out. Thank you so much for you, for showing up, for bringing all these people together, for giving such amazing content for anyone in the world to listen to at yeah. any moment. I feel like you definitely are lending an ear in more ways than you realize. Next, we have an update from Shannon. She appeared in episode 168, making transitions easy and handling excessive silly behavior. Shannon and I have met a bunch of times in real life. She lives in New Jersey and she came to the Authentic Parenting Conference as well. Shannon, when you first came to the podcast to do the on-air coaching call, do you remember what challenges you discussed with me during the call? Yeah. And what were they? The, the few that we were discussing back on the podcast was the transition with the my girls during transition time. It's very hard for them to get regulated and to move to different like at nighttime, their nighttime routine, or sometimes in the morning, their morning routine, like they're doing a fun activity and then trying to get them to do something that's not as fun, of course. And the different um, regulation, like the zones, we talked about the green, yellow, red zones and how to notice the differences of and regulating the um, different zones that my younger daughter 
um, was heading into the yellow and red zone frequently and how to deal with that. Mm. And remind me, how old are your children now? Eight and seven. Mm. Did you have any expectations when you came on to do the coaching call or you were just like, oh, whatever comes out of this? <laughs> No, I had expect I had expectations that you know anytime I talk with you and any type of interaction, emails, any information you give me, it's always very informative and it really guides me to help different scenarios in our our life at home. And I expected to make some changes and to actually grow from the experience. So I appreciate that. And what were you were during the call? Do you remember? having any aha moments or putting together some puzzle pieces for yourself and saying, this makes sense. Yeah, it made sense, what, especially going over the different areas of how children go through the different regulatory zones, like really paying attention to when they're in green, yellow, and red, and the difference in just making, being aware. And, you know, after we review that, where my younger daughter, Gina's in, OT right now, they actually had the different zones too that they review. So I thought that was like awesome that we talked about it. And then I also saw that at the gym there where she goes. Mm. And based on our conversation on the coaching call, what did you change? You know, what did you apply, implement? And what were the results? If, if any, I mean, maybe you neglected uh, the ideas. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, you know, we're going through the challenges again a little bit and just remembering that pause button and remembering how to be aware of those different regulatory changes and being there to be more of it of helping your child and knowing that this isn't an emergency, that we can definitely figure this out together, that they're just unreg, you know, they just can't regulate their body right now. And we're supposed to be there to actually guide and help them during this, instead of getting annoyed or, you know, making it more of about you, it's really about just pausing and being curious and really being there to help your child. Mm. And I remember you also talked about yourself on the podcast, the, your own tendency to rush through things, unable mm -hmm. to relax, uh, and, 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 and things of that nature being present, even though you are meditating and you are quite a mindful mom. How have things shifted in, in that aspect in terms of your own um, work? Just being aware really is the big thing for me lately. And even my husband was on board because I always would say time a lot. Like I was su such a time oriented person. So we were all on board watching and my husband had a code word. If I used time too much, like if I kept repeated, repeating myself consistently and I completely grew out of it. I'm so aware if I say time once, I'm like, okay, Shannon, <laughs> like you're good, you know? So it's just like even last night, you know, being at the dinner table and just like slowing our body down. I actually had to teach um, meditation and breathing to my coworkers this morning and bringing it to the workplace and actually sharing my experience of what I do at home with the four, seven, eight breathing was, you know, I just thought it was powerful that I could actually share it with many other people so they could be successful too. And during that time, I was helping my little one, Gina, like put ketchup on her plate. And she went and like squeezed the bottle and the damn ketchup went everywhere last night. And I just, you know, for the moment, I was like, okay, this is annoying. But I just breathed. And she's like, mom, we could clean this up together. And it was just so much like you could feel the difference of how your body feels and like how better you you are and it's just so important you know like when you slow down and you could just be because I had to get out of the house at a certain time for a party last night also so like I was under the but I just you know slowed down with my girls and it just went so much smoother to get out the door it really did yeah that's that's great so there are some changes. So in terms of where are you today, as opposed to when you did the on-air coaching call, what are the updates? 
The updates are definitely myself being more aware and pausing and being curious and helping my child and just being less frazzled, you could say, and just being in the moment more. We're still working with the the whole, you know, green, yellow, red zones and be, making aware and helping, especially my younger one. And during transitions, I'm trying to be making it more fun. Like if I if I can make it like more of a fun game, like like hey, let's walk like a robot to go brush our teeth or something, like make it more of like a, a game or something fun and exciting. They're more intrigued to just get, you know, because who wants to stop watching TV and then to go brush your teeth? Who, You know what I'm trying to say? So <laughs> you have to try to think like a child and just make it more of a fun aspect for them. And it, they're more cooperative. Or I'll be like, you know, especially when they have to finish their homework. I'm like, well, when you do this, then we could, you know, do this. And they're like, okay, I got it. And the more you, you stay consistent and work with them, you know, they're so, they just are so aware of it now and just easier in the morning. They, you know, and even even at night, it's a, a lot easier, you know, cause they just know and expect it now. Yeah. I also remember you had this, you had the narrator in you when you were rushing out the door in the oh, morning, yeah. right? You, you said that you talk too much. Oh, exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. How, how is that going? No, I'm, like I pause now. I just stop talking more. Like I notice, like if I, like in my, if I, my own anxiety or my own anger is getting the best of me, I just stop. I breathe. And I'm like, I just stay quiet now. And then the girls will look at me. Are you okay? And they're like, Oh, mommy's doing her breathing. <laughs> so, you know, and it definitely works because like, they're not even listening to you. The more you're talking, 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 it's like, they're, they heard maybe the first word and then they're, you know, doing their own thing, you know? Yes, yes, true, true. And then we get aggravated and frustrated and yeah. and things get out of control. But really, it's like we created the situation mm -hmm. right? oftentimes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I want to thank you for coming on today and giving us some updates. Even though, like That's you said, question. you're still struggling with the same challenge of you know, moving from one activity to another, transitions. Transitions are hard sometimes for sensitive mm -hmm. children, you know, especially. And, and and it's not like the challenges are going to go away, but the way you approach the challenge, I feel like I'm hearing now that there, there has something, uh, something has shifted there for you, your perspective, your approach, how you view it. You know, the challenge may not, go away right now uh, it may linger for a period of time but I think how we approach it is, is important instead of getting agitated and thinking mm -hmm. that we caused it or we have a you know we're responsible for fixing it I mean it sounds like you're doing your best you have an understanding and you're helping your child definitely Definitely. And yes, thank you so much again. Another person I enjoyed hearing an update from was Lisa from the United Kingdom. She appeared in episode 151, Three Powerful Solutions to Managing Difficult Misbehaviors. Lisa, when you first came to the podcast to do the on-air coaching call, what were your main challenges at the time? Do you remember what questions you brought to me? Oh, I should imagine it was about um, Ethan and his emotions would have been one of them, was it? Yes, I think so. I think we talked about challenging, difficult behaviors, right? Yeah, and maybe a bit of sibling rivalry. Was there a bit of, a bit of that then? Yes, we also talked about handling dinner time and children giving you a hard time after school, right? Before yeah. before bedtime. That was a tricky period for you. Yes. Um, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember that. It feels like so long ago, but obviously it's not actually been that long ago. Yeah, it feels like ages ago. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still face the same challenges? No. I would say... Both the boys coming out of school together has helped loads because 
the little one's not like holding on to my apron strings the same and what an attention where the older one was getting the attention from just coming in from school so because they're both coming in from school it seems a bit more balanced and then they're talking to each other about what's happened at school and it's not just all about they want something from me they're they're getting a bit of um, conversation between the two of them as well so I would say it's a lot more balanced Eaton's a lot calmer as well um it's also changed because I think at the time I was still child minding so I had other kids leaving around tea time and you know it was quite frantic where now I just do night shift at the hospital so it's a lot more just me and the kids rather than me and the kids and another family and somebody ringing the doorbell and that so it's a lot easier in that sense Mm. and do you remember when you first came to the coaching call what were your expectations or did you just come with no expectations and you were just curious yeah I think I came with no expectations and just wanting some um support on Mm. how to deal with things I think sometimes you look at it and you can't see what really needs to be seen if you know what I mean, um, yes. because you're living it every day, you can't see what's the important bit. You just see all these problems and sometimes you don't see the positive side of things as well. So it was good to get a balanced outside view of things. Mm. Do you remember what was your biggest aha after our call? I know it's been a long time, but purposefully, I'm not asking you to listen to that episode. I'm just going from You're memory. Asking me to do memory. <laughs> Um, when you when you walked away from our call do you remember the feeling or the uh aha or maybe you didn't have maybe I did I did I just felt as if like I was supported as a a mother that I can do this because I can't remember exactly what you said to me but it didn't feel overwhelming that I couldn't implement some of the things that you were saying to me and I think that you did discuss um the eldest one's emotions quite a bit um to help me understand things a bit better about what he was going through at that time so yeah I think I I just felt empowered to be able Mm. to deal with the situation better Mm. and did you implement any of the tips or ideas or the insights right away or over time or at the moment it sounded all good and you felt empowered and you just continued on with your life. And of course, life circumstances changed, right? Or right now your work schedule is different and your children go to school, both of them. Yeah. Uh, I can't actually remember what you said to me to do step by step. But I do think that what I came away with was I had to kind of be quite strict on allowing each child to go through what they're going through and trying to support them in that without what am I trying to say some situations it was okay for me to have time with me and that child rather than me that child and the sibling so I think I still do that now I try and make sure there's enough time for one-to-one with each child as well as family time because I think I put quite a lot of emphasis on where to do everything together and family 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 which is good but I think sometimes the child needs time just one-to-one as well yeah that's such a great point for people who have more than one child it's we can never emphasize that enough right exactly exactly so like um maybe once every three months one of the children will go away to their grand and I'll keep the other child here and we'll do like and overnight and they sleep in my bed and we go out for dinner and we go to cinema, whatever it is, just the two of us. So I think that's really helped. And what are their ages now, your boys? They're eight and five. Oh, eight and five. Okay. And how is your life overall in general? How would you say, how is your parenting, where you're at at your parenting at the moment? Are you enjoying parenthood? Are, Are you in a more comfortable place? I would say, yeah, I'm definitely um, enjoying the boys. It's a lot calmer in the house. I'm calmer. I think certain anxieties have left us, which is good. 
but there's still always stuff to work on. There's still got new phases they're coming into and you're, you're having to deal with it. But in general, I feel a lot more in control of situations. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. But that's that's a good perspective to have, I think. There are always going to be new challenges, a new phase, a new season. And once yeah. you're a parent, you're a parent forever. Uh, you know, where there is no uh, stress-free, challenge-free uh, and period. And that should not be our goal, right? Yes. Having yeah. that mindset and a perspective shift, I think that this is my life. This is what is. Nothing is permanent. This phase is not going to be here tomorrow. Let me enjoy this moment, whatever I can. And it's nice to look back, right? This is why I'm doing this series because a year ago, when we did the coaching session, your life was a lot more hectic and stressful yeah. in, in terms yeah. of your own personal life too, in terms of work and other things. It's, yeah. it's so nice to hear that things shift. And that's the message I want to communicate to the listener who is probably, let's say, struggling in the moment that yeah. hard times come and hard times go. And there is- Exactly. And I can't even remember being back in that stage as in, I, I do remember now speaking to you how all, not awful it was, but how stressful it was every day and the guilt and all this kind of other emotions that you put on yourself. And I've also taken from that, that I've learned, you have to take time for yourself. Especially being a single parent, we always think that we have to carry all these burdens. And all my friends kept saying to me, you need time for yourself. And it wasn't until I actually started to just take a little bit of time and not feel guilty about it. Do I become a better, calmer person? Do you know, because I'm enjoying life as a person myself too. So I feel as if that helps a lot as well. Mm, yes, yes. Very good. Powerful. Well, I want to thank you for your time and for your commitment and being a, a listener and member of the Authentic Parenting community. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the support you give everyone as well. So thank you. And finally, let's hear from Evelyn, who appeared in episode 167, How to Curb Backtalk, Teach Respect and Responsibility. This episode is also in the top 10 of 2019. It's in the fourth place. Evelyn, when you first came to the podcast to do an on-air coaching call, mm -hmm. first of all, what made you <laughs> sign up for that daunting <laughs> role? You know, put yourself out there to be coached on air. Well, I, I didn't think I was putting myself out there. I thought, I thought it was a, a great... Uh, opportunity to get some advice from you. I've listened to your podcast for a while and I loved all your, the, your approach in general to life and, and to raising children and to being positive and, but real at the same time. And I thought, my gosh, if I could be lucky enough to have that, of course, you know, and of course I was also, I had my issues and it, it always helps to have a little, uh, guidance. And I thought I might, I for sure get that from you. Do you remember what challenges we discussed on that episode? Yes, I do. I remember talking about wanting to teach my children responsibility and back talk. And it was also um, just in general, what I believed was also consequences. That was the other thing was consequences as well. And then we talked about uh, how to change the, be the, the language from consequences and correcting and 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 that kind of thing so uh and you suggested at that time that i work at putting together perhaps some sort of contract with the kids so that they felt involved it wasn't just a unilateral unilateral decision that i was making about hey, you're going to do this and you're not going to do that and if you do do this this is going to happen and so we talked about uh, getting them involved in that and maybe even getting their input into what could be or what kind of I don't want to use the word consequence, but if, if we didn't follow through with what we had agreed upon, what should be the outcome of that and that type of thing. And how old are your children? So now my daughter's almost 14. <laughs> At the time she was almost 13. And now my son is 11. Mm. So yeah, so I saw a big shift in both of them actually this year because, or in the last, since I spoke to you in February, 
definitely the teenage uh, stuff is starting to surface, especially in my daughter. Uh, I've had to learn a lot of patience this year. I've had to learn to pick my battles, which I think is important because I realize a lot of times that, especially as a teenager, they have no control sometimes over how they feel. Uh, there's so much stimulation. There's so much, so many messages coming at them from all ends. And I, I really feel that when they come home, they feel like they can just unload. And sometimes you happen to be the person they unload on. And I realize that I think she, I think every child needs that. I think they need to feel that they have a safe space, that they're not going to be judged, that they're not going to be attacked or, or, or made to feel bad about feeling bad. It happens. Yeah. So there are days when I don't take it well because I haven't had a great day. And, but I always try to take a responsibility for that. Like I'll apologize. Not so, so much about getting upset because if it was, if it was necessary because of, it was just out of line or, but I will always apologize about how I got upset, especially if I raised my voice or if I got angry, you know, and it's just the way I communicated more, more or less because I want them to understand that it's okay to be angry. It's just sometimes, you know, keep in mind that it's, you know, you have to keep in mind the other person's feelings as well. And that you even said in that episode that we did that about apologies and that they don't really mean much to you. The words themselves, it was more the actions. Yeah, the feelings, um, the right? Feelings. And yeah. I always tell them, and I, and I told them, you know, like, I know I, I made you upset and I'm sorry for that. Mm. So I try. But like you say, I mean, like, I have good days and bad days, but I do my best and, uh, it uh, has its ups and downs. I try to stay consistent, but it's 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 slowly getting better, I'd say. Do you remember um, what were your aha moments during the coaching call? Yes, changing the language, which I found w changing the language in my head, so that speak uh, how I portray things. I thought that not only helped me with my children, it helped me in general in life, even with my own self and how I thought about things that were going on in my day to day or how I perceive things or people. So mm -hmm. that was, I found very useful. Also, I like the idea of, to me, that kind of, we talked about the, it, we didn't really talk about control, but as we spoke, I understood that it was my attempt at trying to control things. I was trying to make things just right. You know, like uh, keeping things, in, it's almost like keeping things in a box, but realizing that life is, is, you know, it's, it's going to, you're going to color outside the lines. It's going to happen. So I think it gave me a little bit more license to, <clears throat> or sorry, permission to be more myself. You also talked about how, you know, we can't be so hard on ourselves. We're human. That for me was like a, Oh, okay. You know, <laughs> I can, I can, I can mess up sometimes. I, one aha moment for me was when I said, you know, I want to show them the right way to be and the right way to behave. And you said, no, it's okay for them not to see the right way sometimes. Yeah. And it's okay for them not to see you always perfect and, and, you know, and, and to be we, like your, your, your issues, if, if whatever they might be, it, it's okay. And I thought, yeah, you know, you're right. It's true. Cause I don't think my parents ever thought about it. <laughs> Yeah, I think you know? when a lot of conflict rises from from that in in parenting, when we yeah. try to step into a role of a parent as opposed to just being ourselves with our children, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yes, I I, I learned to be Anna with my daughter. Just mm -hmm. the way I act with other people, I bring that self into the same into the relationship with my daughter, yeah. and I know how great that is. You know, the same sense of humor that I apply somewhere else, I use it here. Yes. The quirkiness, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the silly things that I do or the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the jokes that I make or the sarcastic comments. Mm -hmm. I think that's me. And my daughter <laughs> learns to be with me in my relationship as opposed to I'm um, the parent. And th that this amorphous role and it disconnects us from our true nature. I, I feel like that's the thing we have to let go. You're not a mom. You're not a parent. You're not a dad. You're you. Uh, yeah. Right. Like show up like yourself. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I think it also that like for me uh, that aha moment and in keeping with this was understanding that I don't have to parent like my husband parents necessarily. Like you were saying that we we could 
be, I can be the mom and, or, and do it my, my mm-hmm. way to a certain extent. Of course, we're going to respect each other's, <clears throat> otherwise it would be just anarchy. But I think that was also important for me. I think it was, it allowed me to be more myself and understand that he has his way of thinking. I have my way of, or he has his way of being rather, I should say, we think along the same lines, but he has his way of being and I have my way of being and that's okay. And we have different relationships with our children. And I think that that's normal. I don't think it's going to be um, the same relationship. Yes. Yesterday, in fact, my daughter said something. Um, when she first signed up for school, for middle school, she had to choose a foreign language. And of course, coming from this Spanish background, I think I shared this on the podcast, we were at this room and we had to make a decision. Well, we, she had to make a decision. Mm-hmm. And there, there were other uh, world languages. And I said, why don't you choose French. Like I love French. I'll mm-hmm. learn I'll learn with you. And she said, No, I'm good at Spanish. I'm gonna stick with Spanish. And my husband said, Yes, you should because you'll be the best one in your group. Um, so <laughs> so so they decided that she should take Spanish. And mm-hmm. then of course they had to switch her into French because she was way too advanced for Spanish. That's uh-huh. a long long story. And the guidance counselor had a conversation with her. Yesterday, my daughter says, mommy, you won't believe, I don't know how this came up, but she says, yeah, mommy, that reminds me of that time when the guidance counselor said, when I told the guidance counselor, yeah, from the beginning, my mom suggested that I take French, but my dad wanted me to take Spanish. (laughs) And And the guidance counselor said, are your parents divorced? And my, <laughs> and my daughter says, I looked at her and I said, no, they just have different opinions. Uh-huh. That's fantastic. <laughs> and, and, and so that sums up that, hey, you know, these are yeah. two different people. Mm-hmm. They have two different opinions and different parenting styles. Yeah. Predominantly, they have the same values, but they don't have to be divorced. Like, you yeah. know, she, she was taken aback by this comment. Because I don't think they're used to that. I think they, they're used to, or the, the norm usually is that one parent will parent more, which is what normally happens, whoever spends more time at home. Yeah. But I think now as the kids get older, especially in my case, my husband is more involved in certain things and uh, has an opinion about certain things, not similar to mine in many ways. But uh, I think it's a good way for them to also understand, understand the world and realize that just because you're from the same family or the same team or the same group, whatever it may be, you're not going to see things the same way. Yes. And it would be heck so boring. I know. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what were your takeaways in general and what have you applied after the coaching call? So for me, the takeaways, like I said, was really more about taking the pressure off of how I was parenting. Like, I think I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to get it right and, and to just do things just so. And I think so that helped a lot, made me relax a little bit, which is always a good thing for a parent, I think, not to take themselves too seriously, like we just said, that I wasn't responsible for every little thing that they felt and thought, that including them in the process, giving them more agency, I think that was a big thing for me. Mm-hmm. And I think I, if now more and more for me, I, I don't know for younger kids, because it doesn't, it seems like such a long time ago, but I see it now more and more that they want to start, or I see them creating their, who they're going to be in the way that sometimes they'll, they'll respond to me. Like I'll say something and they'll, they'll say something contrary, what I would normally call backtalk. I'm starting to realize that's not backtalk. That's just them expressing who they are and their wow. perspective. And there's a part of me that said that sometimes gets ticked off, of course, like, who are you to talk to me like that? You know, but, but there's a part of me that says, wait a minute, I want her to stand up for herself. I don't want her to, especially my daughter, my son, I, I feel he'll stand up for himself. Maybe I'm, I'm sticking to a stereotype, but I feel like he's more, he's always been more firm about these things. My daughter, I find, I want her to feel like she can have her say and not be afraid of how people are going to, if people are going to like it or not. She should still feel like she can say what she's feeling. Of course, without hurting someone's feelings, she has to be considerate. But I, I think that that's where I do that pause that I talked about in the podcast also, where I try not to react. And if I do make the mistake of reacting, then I'll say, listen, you know, I'm sorry that I reacted that way. You're right. You know, you, there's no reason why you can't do X, Y, or Z. Or So I take 
I try to slow down for one thing much more and just not be so reactive. And I try to, like I said before, pick my battles and realize, does it really matter if she wears that or she doesn't wear that? Or, you know, like I'm giving you a, a silly example, but I really try to weigh the, the, the severity of things or how important is it that I have my say right now, more so than her having her say. I've also let them, you know, like I did with her in grade six, I did the same thing with my son. I said to them, sink or swim, like this, you guys are on your own with homework. So my son is completely and totally responsible for whether he misses something, forgets something, doesn't do something. And it's happened. He's messed up a couple of times and he's come to me in a panic. And I said, that's why you have a calendar. That's why you have an agenda. That's why your teachers have Google Classroom. I mean, you're good. There's no reason why you shouldn't be completely on the ball. So that's been a bit of a transition, but he's getting better with that too. I think that's good for them. I think they have to start taking responsibility in that sense for their own stuff. You know, they, like you said, they can't always rely on me because I think, oh, one of the takeaways I remember right now when I say that is you saying that they're never going to be able to make a decision on their own if I'm always choosing for them. Yeah, and telling them what to do, and that scared the hell out of me. To be honest, <laughs> I thought, "Oh my God, she's so right!" Like I can't imagine this. So they can't decide, you know, when they're going to have to make big choices. Like, do I take that drink? Do I do that thing? I want them to feel confident enough to say no or yes or whatever it is they feel. I know. I think like we all need to remind ourselves that home ground is the place to practice those decision making yeah. opportunities it this is the practice ground for a bigger life yeah. and and if we uh, get offended by every back talk and and label it as back talk mm. that then we're we're hushing their voices my daughter one day came from school and she's like and she's very opinionated, as, as you, you may as you may uh, assume already. She's, she's spirited, <laughs> spirit, she's a diff- as I say, difficult kid. She says, "I don't understand my my principal at the time. I'm not going to name her." She's mm-hmm. like, "They are so fake." I said, "Why? What happened?" She's like, "Ah, they teach us about Martin Luther King that he did this. He followed his dream. He everybody we learn about all those great." people who were mm-hmm. like leaders and spoke and empowered and took people, you know, after them and things like that. And yet, mommy, when I tried to express my opinion about such and such, they didn't want to listen. They gave me a, like a in-school detention or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she was very upset about that. Oh. And I thought to myself, wow, she is actually right. Mm-hmm. Like, in theory, it all makes sense. Like this feminist principle yeah. of their school was all about empowering women and feminism. But when they show signs of empowerment and mm-hmm. speak up and, mm-hmm. and in small, low stake activities, they get hushed and shushed and shut down. And my daughter had noticed that. And I'm like, wow, this little kid understands this. But they stuff. noticed everything, I think. And that's what I think we forget. And I, I had this huge argument with my husband this week because he has an issue with how my daughter dresses sometimes. And he, you know, uh, she's wearing tight shirts and she's this. And she, my daughter's, you know, she's like me. She's got a little bit of a chest and she's, she got developed early. She's in middle school and she's almost done. And, and, I, and he says, you know, she's going to attract boys' attention. Uh, of course she is. That's it's normal. She's, she's learning about her sexuality now. It's perfect. I think it's perfectly normal within reason. It's his fear, man. It's his fear. Of course, of course. And so we had this huge, and he's like, you have to support me. And I said, but I can't support you if I don't agree with you. And I said, I good, good. I love this, but it's true. And I said, you know, I don't agree with you. I'll meet you some like to a point because I don't want to show this divided front because I don't, I, I think that that's no good as well. But at the same time, I explained to him why I feel this way. I said, I don't want her to, she, I, I wanted to understand that how she presents herself is important, not in the sense because people are going to accept you or not, but that she should care about her appearance and, you know, feel good about how she looks. But if she feels good wearing tight stuff and she's doing it because she's confident and wants to, but not because she's trying to attract attention, that's fine. Because what are we telling our girls? You can be empowered. You can be whatever you want, but cover up. Yeah. Don't show your bum. Don't show your boobs. 
and then he maybe you ask him what does it bring up for him oh i know it yeah he's yeah. thinking he's i know where he's going with this i mean i i grew up in this almost the same like generation with him too i know i get it but i lived that i remember feeling looked at and and always covering up because my chest was a little bit bigger than the most girls and feeling uncomfortable and the hell with that let her live and be proud of what she has who she is and 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 just as long as she respects people around her that's what yes. i want her to learn respecting other people not how tight her pants are i mean of course within reason i'm not going to let her go to school yes. and short no, shorts no. but I, i don't think that that's an issue i understand yeah, well heck i get um looks from men these days too i was a uh, sexy wonder woman for oh. halloween um, i saw uh, your pictures i remember now yes oh uh, you saw it okay I so said. Uh, my daughter had suggested that I be a Wonder Woman and I said you know what I'm going to be a Wonder Woman and yeah. so well but there were consequences huh? the, the whole neighborhood was looking at me talking about me to this day <gasps> but that's okay but there was one guy like older creepy man dressed as Zorro huh? who, who was chasing me following me the whole day oh that's just wrong and then that is not the end of the story huh? Even now, of so many days after the Halloween and months, he sees me in the neighborhood and he comes and he wants to talk to me. He has taken my picture. He showed me on his phone. And my daughter has seen this and she goes, Mommy, Zorro <laughs> likes you. Can, you. can you believe that? Yeah, so I, yeah. It's, it's like it happens even to us. Like, I know. I know. And, and I get it. I understand why he wants to do it. He thinks he's going to protect her. But I reminded him. Remember when you were a kid the more your parents told you not to do something the more you did it. Yes. And I said I know that my daughter when she leaves here the way she's dressed is the way I'll find her if I end up at school, you know, to check mm -hmm. in on her let's say. But mm -hmm. I said when I went to school my parents were so hard on me that I left without makeup, but I said and I came home without makeup, but I was wearing makeup at school. Mm -hmm. Wow, so, you're so honest and brave. Wow, you're so sage. You know, you're you're. Well, thinking. I don't know. I'm sage. It's just it's the truth. I I did it, and I understand that. I remember. I mean, it was if it was a lifetime ago that I was her age, but I remember what it was like to be always told not to and don't do this and don't do that. And the more my parents told me not to do it, the more I did it. Yes, yes. And I I tell them that. So you know, I'm not saying she's never going to do anything that she shouldn't do, but at least I want her to feel like she's accepted. You know, wow. amazing. Well, thank you for coming uh, to to the podcast to uh, update me. I I would love uh, to to catch up again and chat with you. You you're like a such sage uh, mom and woman, and I have a lot of, mm, I think, in the same lines as you do. In I'm listening to you, and I'm like, yeah, you know, she's like, I I I can see, you know, we're we're yeah. Similar. No wonder you listen to the podcast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much again. You're welcome. And that is it, my dear listener, for this special episode of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Did you enjoy hearing from all the past participants of the on-air coaching episodes? Have you listened to any of the on-air coaching episodes? I am going to make a special playlist on Spotify, so you better get your hands on that playlist soon. For more info, episode show notes, contact info, and everything else, visit AuthenticParenting.com. And as always, connect to the present moment to yourself and your children. Until next week... I am Anna Seawold. Thank you so much for listening. Mm -hmm.